Okay, tonight's lecture we're going to be talking about single replacement reactions, and we've kind of talked about these already under the guise of, um, of oxidation reduction reaction. Uh, it's basically the same thing. So what we're going to have occurring here is we're going to have an elemental metal replacing another metal that's already in a compound. So let me give you an example of this. Um, sodium metal would be an example of our elemental metal. And let's say we drop it into some, um, I don't know, magnesium chloride solution. Now, what's going to happen is the sodium is going to come in and it's going to replace the magnesium in this, in this compound, this ionic compound. And so what we're going to get is we're going to get sodium chloride and then the magnesium is going to be knocked out uh, by itself and then that's going to be a metal it's probably going to fall to the bottom of the uh, of the solution so then we have uh, sodium chloride solution plus magnesium metal um, and that's our single replacement uh, single metal replacing a, a metal that's already in a compound we can write our net ionic as well um, solid sodium is going to not ionize uh, we have our magnesium chloride solution so we're going to have our magnesium plus our chlorine we're going to have our sodium chloride solution. Sodium is going to ionize, plus the chloride is going to ionize. And then, of course, we're going to have the magnesium as a solid. And then we can cross some uh, spectators out here. Chloride is a spectator. Chloride is a spectator. Um, and there we go. Chloride's canceled, so I'm not really worried about balancing. Um, we could also ask who is being oxidized and who is being reduced here with respect to our reactants. And we could uh, calculate oxidation number. So sodium in its elemental form is going to have an oxidation number of zero. Magnesium is going to be a plus two because that's its charge from this compound. Um, a, we're going to have a one uh, plus one for the sodium ion over here, and then we're going to have a zero over here. So we're looking for who is um, who has a reduction in charge, and we have a zero or a plus two going down to a zero. So that's going to let us know that the magnesium ion was being reduced and so then the sodium going up is going to be oxidized and so that's how we do our uh, single replacement reactions with metals now let me scroll down here and let's talk about when we have a single replacement reaction when we have elemental nonmetals replacing elemental uh, or metals nonmetals in a compound and so we can do this real quickly here Let's say we have a chloride, chlorine gas um, being being bubbled through maybe um, some potassium bromide solution. Now, what's going to happen here is the chlorine is going to come in and replace the non-metal because chlorine is a non-metal. It's going to be attracted to the positive charge on the potassium. So then we're going to get on the other side potassium chloride solution, and then the bromine is going to be knocked out by itself. Now we have to remember that bromine is one of the seven diatomics. And so whenever it's by itself, it's going and it's not an ion, it would and it's not going to be an ion here because we have a transfer of electrons, it's going to be diatomic. And and uh, bromine when it's at room temperature, standard conditions, it's a liquid. Um, and so there is our uh, total equation and just looking real carefully at that, we're not balanced. We have uh, uh, two potassiums, two chlorines, and we'll throw a two right there as well. And so let's go ahead and write our net ionic here. And so we've got uh, chlorine, it's a gas, we do not ionize. Potassium bromide, we are going to ionize. I guess it's a solution. Potassium chloride is going to ionize. And uh, liquids, bromine is a pure liquid, it does not get ionized. So our spectator ion is going to be our potassium ion here, and potassium ion there, and we have, we're going to go ahead and balance now, so we have two chlorines and two bromines there. Um, I could also ask who's going to be reduced and who's going to be oxidized, and so once again we could do our oxidation numbers, chloride, uh, elemental form, there's a zero, um, a minus one for each of those two bromines, a minus one for each of those two chlorines, and a zero there. So what we're going to do now is we'll um, we'll look and see who's having the reduction in charge. Um, we have a minus one here going up to a zero. That's that's an increase, and we have a zero here going down to a minus one there. That is a reduction. So chloride gas is being reduced, 
and that means bromine has to be oxidized. Um, let's go down here and real quickly talk about this is the this is a little chart called an activity series. And basically what this this activity series says is an activity series lets us know um, who is more easily oxidized um, in a reaction. Or, or another way to say it is if you're at the top of the chart, you can replace anybody below it if they are in a compound. So if we see here up, up at the top of the chart we have lithium, um, lithium metal. Lithium metal can replace anybody below it who is already in a compound. Let's say we have a like sodium chloride solution. Notice how um, on this chart uh, lithium is above sodium. That means that this reaction will actually occur. Lithium has the ability to come in and replace sodium out of that compound to form um, lithium chloride solution. Plus, uh, we're going to have some solid sodium formed, uh, which will then, of course, immediately react with the uh, the. Um, it's going to immediately react to the water uh, from the solution, but we'll, we'll, let's not worry about that right now. So that lets us know this reaction does occur. Um, but in another in another case, what we can look at is we can look at um, we can look at let's say somebody who maybe a reaction that would not occur. Let's say um, we took some down here. We've got some zinc. Let's say we took some solid zinc and we reacted it with some calcium chloride solution. Now, because zinc is lower on this chart down here than the calcium, calcium is right there, that means um, zinc cannot come in and replace um, the calcium. It's just not going to happen. Uh, the, the bond between the calcium and the chloride is too strong, um, according to this, and we would say that this is no reaction um, occurring because uh, zinc is below on the act on the activity series of metal zinc is below so it's not going to occur so um, that is just a way to predict um, how, whether or not reactions will occur or not once again if you are up here at the top you can replace anybody who's down here below you and you will not have to memorize this activity series you'll always be given an activity series um, if you need one or it'll we'll tell you what's going on with that okay that's uh, tonight's homework, and we'll do some more practice problems in class tomorrow.